This intercession is taking place near to Keble College in the city of Oxford, England. And it is concerning Tractarianism versus Puritanism. For it is during the 1840s. In fact, he started, according to this, in the 1833 as tracts for the times. The Oxford movement was a movement of high church members of the Church of England, which eventually de developed into Anglo-Catholicism. The movement whose original devotees were mostly associated with the University of Oxford argued for the reinstatement of some older Christian traditions of faith and their inclusion into Anglican liturgy and theology. They thought Anglicanism as one of three branches of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. That was Orthodoxy, Roman Catholicism and Anglicanism. The, the movement's philosophy was known as Tractarianism after a series of publications, The Tracks for the Times, published from 1833 to 1841. Tractarians were also disparagingly referred to as Numanites before 1845 and Pussyites after 1845, after two, two prominent Tractarians, John Henry Newman, and Edward Bouveria Pussy. The well-known Tractarians included John Keeble, as of the college here, Charles Marriott, Richard Froude, Robert Wilberforce, Isaac Williams, and William Palmer. But what was this? It was a move not of God. It was a move against the Protestant Reformed religion, because it looked to turn Romeward. Ultimately, John Henry Newman joined the Roman Catholic Church and became one of its cardinals. And that movement was very dangerous because it was taking away from that which was based upon the Word of God as the final authority of the doctrine and the things of God and bringing in that which would be seen and heard, that which was of the physical and not of the spiritual, that which placed barriers, placed men as those who would be before God rather than the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary. In other words, it was denying that the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary had fully and completely done all that was needed for men and women to be brought to repentance and to faith and into a living relationship with the living God. So what do the scriptures say? Psalm 40 and the sixth verse. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. So the Oxford movement is very much putting the priest as the one who is the intermediary between God and man. And there's only one who is that intermediary, and that is the Son of God himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. And what does God seek of those who do come to him? That they should have that personal relationship that they should have a personal saviour, a redeemer, and be born again of the Spirit of God. 
Psalm 51 and the 17th verse. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. So this is what God sees and requires not to hear bells being rung, not to hear that which, which would be of incense, not the physical, but the spiritual. And the spiritual comes through the cleansed heart of the believer. The spiritual comes through the baptism with the Holy Ghost and God himself living within the cleansed empty vessel of the hearts that have been given to him, given to him freely without the intervention of any of these that were brought as requirements through the Oxford movement. O oh God, thou art God, thou art sovereign God, thou art the Almighty, and there is none beside thee. And the Oxford movement looked to ensnare, looked to take that which should have been of the Protestant Reformed religion, and that which had the Puritan element to it, back into the slavery of the Roman Catholic Church, that which looked to place priests above the revelation of the Spirit of God, and that revelation which convicts sinners of their sin, that revelation of the Holy Ghost which convicts of sin, righteousness and judgment and reveals that the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be the only Saviour, the only requirement and that his cry at Calvary, it is finished, is means that is finished. The Oxford movement looked to deny that, looked to bring in that which is of the Roman Catholic Church, of the Antichrist, and the Oxford movement and its Anglo-Catholicism is of the Antichrist, rather than having the Word of God as the full and final authority of all things concerning doctrine, that authority of the which has all the doctrines which have come through the 39 articles of religion of the Church of England. They are more than adequate because they were based on the Word of God and did not need it to be added to. And I praise the O God that this Oxford movement is now fully exposed for what it has been and the damage that it has done to the body of Christ in seeking to deny the believer to come into the full relationship, the full living relationship, the full union with God through the atoning blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and through the person of the Holy Spirit living in and through the cleansed vessel of the believer, that then there is that worshiping in spirit and in truth rather than bringing in those things which point to the physical, those things which take away from the spiritual, and those things which do not give the Lord Jesus Christ his rightful place within the believer. 
that all these barriers that have been brought in into the Anglican Church, barriers of altar rails, barriers of that which the Oxford movement brought in and denied the Lord Jesus Christ his rightful place as the head of the church and as the head of the full, true, redeemed body of Christ, having been cleansed through his blood and having been risen, ascended and glorified. And I say to Oxford now, you devils that are still at work through Anglo-Catholicism, you have been found out, and I cast you out through all the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ in and through me, that the Lord Jesus Christ shall now be able to do all that he still is looking to do and shall do, because when he said from the cross, it is finished, that was his final authority in all things, and he and he alone shall have the preeminence here in Oxford. For Father, you shall be glorified. You are being glorified now through thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.